Oh, you go down, you drive down Size Road. It's like a roller coaster. It, uh, I've been in one wreck in my life, and it was on Size Road. I looked in my rearview mirror. I saw something coming. Oh. I thought, I hope he stopped, uh, hits the brakes before I take his hard right turn. I, I, nope. I looked in my rearview mirror again, <laughs> and he was. And then I saw two women walking down the road. I said, "Oh no, distractions!" So I'm trying to turn. About that time, wham! Just got it. Got him. So he ran into the back of me. I get out. I'm looking, and this guy comes out. He's wearing a Sherwin Williams uh, jumpsuit. He's a painter. Painter. So Them said, fumes done got him. I said, "Hmm." So he walks up there. He said, "Man," he said, "Man, I'm sorry." I'm sorry. I said, uh, he said, I ain't got no license. I said, I know. <laughs> yeah, ain't no, you, hey, insurance license? No, I no, know. No, no license, stuff. no insurance. I said, I'll yeah. tell you what. I said, I'm going to take a picture of you, of, of your ID. And if I if I need money out of you, I'll holler at you. You answer the phone when I call you. I, that's yeah, right. He said, all right, I appreciate yeah. it. So moving on. But yeah. that that's, you know. The yeah. one wreck has been on Field Pot. That's it. The one wreck I've ever been in is on Field Pot Road. Yeah. Right. Uh, Phil Pot Road's a gar. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, all yeah. it is to it. It's all them. Uh, Once you get past the gatekeeper of Cy. All the just, drugs. Well, uh, Cy's the mayor of, of mayor Phil Pot. Of the, yeah. <laughs> the mayor. Hey, no, he's, I ain't no mayor. He's a gatekeeper oh, yeah. up yeah, if, there. So, if somebody sketchy moves in the neighborhood, they all meet up at Cy's house yeah. and try to get him to buy them out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I miss driving by Cy's old house and seeing that old Bronco parked out in the front yard wondering, will it crank? Oh no! I wish they would have done. Let me A and E would have let me done what I wanted to do. Blow it up? No, I was going. I was going to hire a dozer, and I was going to run through the house from the south to the north, and then from east to west <laughs> through your house. And, yeah, that old green one. I was going to do it. I tried to get them to film it. I said, "Look, you don't have to pay me much for it. I didn't pay much for it. Hey, just give me what I paid for it, and then hey, we'll put it on TV, and I'll run through it with a dozer." <laughs> and I said, "It'll make y'all a bunch of money." Uh, hey, hard head, you uh, wouldn't listen. He used to show up down there, pick up sire or something. He'd be sitting out there on that porch, smoking him a heater, son, just waiting on you. Oh yeah, burning burn them up. heaters. Yeah, hey, it's a good thing I didn't ever like weed. You'd have never got off that porch, would you? Yeah, I'd have never got off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, hey, just wait, you know, with with everything going on now, it's fixing to be legal well, everywhere. Everything, everything's fixing to be legal. Hey, look, there's a deal. We all know what's going on in this country, but if if you want to know about all that, go somewhere else. This yeah. this ain't we ain't you guys. We're here to laugh and have uh, a good time. So didn't, so. didn't you uh, try to try weed one time? No. I said, how old are you? He, he said, I'm 19. How are you? 18. I said, you people are crazy. Why would you want to smoke something that you're 18 years old and you feel like you're 118? He said, that's what's so great about it, man. It makes everything slow motion. I said, yeah, your brain is slow motion, dude. Now give me another hit. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. I used to walk around, look. Whiskey in Vietnam was two dollars a fifth. And you know, the right gut, the good, it don't make any difference. Hey, it was all two dollars a fifth. So this kid here, you know, and I weighed one thirty, soaking wet, you know. Always had a fifth in my pocket, okay, that was either, you know, probably low <laughs> down on the coast to get to the bottle of the end of the bottle, you know. So the whole year I was over, there, you know. That's why Phil said, "Oh, now all these stories you've been telling about the people stealing your deuce and half tire while you're ten miles an hour and uh, stealing your radio and leaving your music, okay, that is starting to make sense if you was drinking about a fifth of whiskey a day." Oh, yeah. well, you know, th- you talking about that story they told you tire off the deuce and half. We, I don't think. Uh, the audience has heard that story. That I think that'd be a yeah. good one. Oh yeah, that was last week. Yeah, yeah, I no, told. Oh, no, you told we, it already? Yeah, I told yeah last, yep, we last got, week yep. we got the full <laughs> got, Vietnam report. Yeah. It oh. was, last uh, week was like Good Morning Vietnam, yeah. but without Robin Williams yeah. and with Cy. Uh, with so. Cy. <laughs> and trust me, okay, it wasn't the whiskey talking that actually happened. But did no. you tell the one where they swam the motor across oh, the yeah. pond? Yep. Well, we we covered all of Vietnam okay. yeah. in forty-five minutes. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> 
it was, was unbelievable. Look, there are thieves, and then there are expert thieves. Okay. They come under the classification of expert. If I can steal your radio and leave you the music, that is a thief, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! That's so what are we gonna talk about today? Well, I mean, I I'm still more interested in science science experiment myself, yeah. but I, I don't think I heard enough of that story. We're gonna have to have a dare officer on next week to tell everybody not to do drugs. Oh, right. so I just right. told him not to do them. I, that's he true. Look, he just said he needed no. to know. Yeah, he, he paid for information. Well, I, no, you know that's the old deal. about, hey, I'm trying to save you a lot of heartache and trouble here. There you go. Don't. This is one of those things you don't do. Yeah, the human being ain't very bright. <laughs> you okay. don't say. This is they true. don't. They don't listen. You know, they want to experience it for themselves. Oh, and while we're on that, uh oh, this new stuff that they've got out on the street, okay, and the meth and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what are you thinking that you would say? Oh, I'm gonna try it. This stuff will rot the teeth out of your head for crying out loud. You know, and it'll make you stay up for 72 hours. Who wants to do that? There ain't even time well, no, for a no. nap hey, in there. You know, and then if you're 15, okay, you know, hey, it'll make you look like you're 115. No teeth, okay? You look like you've been, uh, you know, you look like you're a raisin. You're starting to dry up and, and crinkle all over. You know, so, hey, the deal on this is, hey, don't do drugs, okay? Ain't nothing worth that. <laughs> This has been a public service <laughs> announcement. <laughs> it's brought to you by the Duck Call Room this, podcast. Right. This brought to you by the FDA and all the... Uh, oh, this man. is a uh, FDA approved. Yeah. <laughs> Family Do show. Do not do drugs. No, nope, stick to the unsweet tea. That's right. And the honey buns. Right. And right. and life will be good, won't it? That's right. Well, look, and the intangib- intangibles that yep. I talked about last time. Okay. Which peace, is joy, patience, peace, kindness. love, all that's good stuff, boys. The fruits of the spirit. That's right. That's a good idea. Replace all your bad habits with the good stuff. Yeah. And I'll quit. Hey, and if you're listening to this on YouTube, be sure you hit like and subscribe and hit the little bell at the bottom. That way you'll know when all the new episodes of the Duck Call Room come out. We try to put them out every Thursday at 6 p.m. But um, with that being said, we're going to take our first break and we'll be back right after this. Well, one thing we all learned in 2020 is that the Internet is even more awesome than we thought it was because i mean for a lot of us that's the way we shopped i mean that's that's how we got everything no more grocery store runs no more no more anything you ordered everything that ended up at your house but for us at duck commander we saw that our fans and the hunters still wanted duck calls and so what did we do we shipped it to them how did we ship it to them we shipped it via stamps.com so uh, one cool thing about stamps.com is you get the services of the post office and UPS right on your computer. You also get big discounts on mailing and shipping rates. So um, stamps.com for us as a company is a no-brainer because it saves us so much time and money. And that's why us, like 900,000 other small businesses in the world, choose stamps.com for all of their postage stuff. So Make 2020 the year that you stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk, and with the promo code DUCK, you can get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. There's no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in DUCK. That's stamps.com, promo code DUCK. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Doesn't that sound good, sir? Sounds like a winner to me. Si, you were asleep like literally 10 minutes ago, and now you're just on fire. It was a good right. nap. Look. He got him a little right. rim. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> hey. I think I offended him. Is, no, you didn't offend me. Look, I'm probably the only man that's ever served 24 and a half years in the military and got a nap every day he served. And honorably right. discharged. Right. That's yeah. it. And honorably <laughs> discharged. <All right. laughs> Even uh, as an E7, no uh, less. You were a uh, supply sergeant, right? That's it. Okay. I could see how you could pull that off, being a supply <laughs> oh, sergeant. All right. All right. Yeah, I, I was 62E, so I couldn't pull that off. Hey, we were working. What's, what's a 62E? The heavy equipment operator. Heavy equipment? Yeah. Well, hey, I was in a heavy equipment outfit, uh, 293rd Engineer Battalion. 
We put bridges across the Rhine River for crying out loud. That's in Germany. Yeah, hey, that's it. I know I, that one. That was something to watch. So speaking of Germany, do you have any good Germany stories? Oh no, no. Look, hey, I hunted, and I was actually a German uh, hunter. Uh, you had to go through the class that I I was the professor in. Oh, to so teach an, you how to hunt the Another German example way. of Dr. Robertson oh, no, and his yeah. teaching hey, experience. Hey, look, how many hey. degrees do you have, sir? Oh, uh, hey, look. I got, I got a dozen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Not not uh, what uh, these are not university uh, accredited courses. Accredited. <laughs> yeah, you, okay. They're, they're technical. These, they, are, the technical these are accredited by experience, boys, which is way better. Oh, okay. Hey, did you hunt this morning? Yes, sir, I did. We killed six blackjacks and six big mallards. Well, that's kind of a... Which, hey, was a good hunt because there ain't many ducks down here. Did you kill any of them? I killed four of them. a boy. Two jacks and two mallards. I like that. I can tell you, honey, because you still got plenty of face paint up in your mustache. Uh, well, hey. <laughs> it's done leaked down. Into the hey, it's around well, his hey. glasses, too. <laughs> hey. Well, look, hey, you got to hide around this joint, boy, to kill anything. Okay, because, hey... If you ask anybody that's hunted all over the world, guess where the wildest game is? Right here. In the state of Louisiana, boys. It, hey, more specifically. Yo, anytime that inside game. Inside Phil's gate. Yeah. <laughs> hey, anytime game appears a pickup going the highway down the highway and the whine of the wheel changes. They go. They gone, son, <laughs> because they know some redneck is grabbing that shotgun he's got in the back of that rig and fixing to kill something. Yeah, as long as you keep driving. As long as, hey, if there. that wheel sound changes, they gone. Mm. Mm. Now, unless you're a redhead like old Red. Red oh. has killed more deer with a pickup than I've shot with a high-powered rifle. <laughs> oh, he put a gut hook on, on the front of his grill he did i remember when he come down there showing that he said i'm gonna gut them before i kill that's them. right he hey, he hits them and guts them at the same time it hits them and he turns that way that hook grabs that's right. them that's right. Right. done throw them in the back of the truck true story that is yeah, a true hey, story rednecks are redneck boys hey but i'll tell you where that ends up it ends up with jimmy red telling you that story about that game board and shoving that pistol up his nose that's, that's right. when you start doing stuff like that that's 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 what happens this is a whole episode for people to let their kids listen to on stuff not to do yeah, yeah. hey right. we're, yes. we're here to tell you right. what not to these do. are things you do not want to try yeah 100 percent. so what so what are the statute of limitations on you know game violations i don't know and i don't want to find out okay well, here here here's the rule here's the rule of thumb is a game warden is asking you a question hey don't answer it okay. i say well that, who was that boy that was old old daniel edwards daniel edwards we were in the blind field says oh oh the wood ducks are getting up he said that's either a deer or old green jeans well guess what right. old green jeans slip up in a row. that's right so phil has everybody trained in the blind he said, if the game warden comes and asks you anything, your only answer is, hey, here's my license. Here's my hunting license. Here's my gun. Here's my gun and three shells. And three shells. And, and three shells. Hey, you see that wood duck right there and that jack? I kill him and no, him he didn't, he didn't, only. He didn't I kill two that. ducks. So Phil says, the only thing you tell him, here's my license, here's my gun, here's my three shells. That's all you say. They so kept, the game warden said, all right, hey, which one of these ducks did you kill? The old Daniel Over said, here's my license. Here's my, here's my son, gun. Here's my three here's shells. Here's my three shells. He said, yeah, but, uh, well, who killed this duck right here? He said, here's my license. <laughs> here's my gun. Here's my three shells. He says, uh, how long you been How long you been hunting around here? He said, here's, here's my, my license. <laughs> here's my here's gun. My gun. Here's, my three shells. here's my three shells. So everybody that blind has been trained. Uh, so that's all you that's say. That's when the game warden looked at him and said, something wrong with you? Yeah. Here's my license. Here's my license. Here's my license. Here's, 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 here's my license. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, here's the thing. Uh, Me and Phil had come to the gate the day before to do some check water level or something. And there's a dude sitting in an old beat up pickup truck, except he's got on what I call John Denver round pink glasses, sunglasses. <laughs> Phil says, 
That's the man. Yep. <laughs> and hey, the next morning, y'all were looking, we're in the blind and looking, and, and wood ducks keep getting up, coming our way. Yeah, and then we, we hear somebody after daylight. We done killed two ducks. Y'all one, no, one duck, mallard hen. Yeah, and we heard, hey, uh, y'all kill anything? Bill said, uh, well, since you've been sitting there since daylight, you know we killed one mallard hen. Yeah. He said, well, how do y'all get in that blind? Bill said, hey, there's a back door in there. You'll see the boat. Come on in. Phil was the only one that shook hands with him. I would have shook hands with that sucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My favorite part is he asked, hey. he asked Phil on the way out. He said, is there an easier way out of here? Phil said, you found your way in here. Find, find your, your way, way out. out. <laughs> nope. Bonk. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, they asked him later. They said, Phil, how did you know that that was GW? He said, round spectacles. Yeah. Rednecks right. don't wear round spectacles. He said, spectacles. hey, red, uh, pink, Round sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. Then they, yeah. they showed up in the driveway down there about 15, 20 years later wanting him to be a part of that book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, hey, there. look, we're going to make you famous. Yeah. That's what they told me. He said, we're going to make you famous. And he said, uh, uh, oh, when you was up there on Moss Lake, how many ducks did y'all kill? And Phil said, oh, I killed a few. He said, but, you know, he said, I don't want to be famous. He said, so y'all take y'all's book, you know, hit the road. Yeah, I don't want to be famous. He said, you Too ain't getting me to admit to nothing. That's right. I don't care what kind of paper I sign. <laughs> oh, that was good stuff. Game Wars. That was the title yep, of it. Game Wars. They yeah. were trying to figure out how Phil slicked them for so many years. That's pretty oh. incredible. Oh, I can tell you. Hey, barefooted. <laughs> barefooted. <laughs> barefooted and in good shape. Hey. <laughs> oh, tell, them, tell them about the seven mile sloughs oh no hey look we're, we're shooting woodies on a roost which is illegal okay <laughs> another thing not no, to no. do look, statute so, hey, of limitations we, right boom bow boom bow y'all i mean we got a toe sack full so just to be clear y'all were y'all were teenagers right? we was teenagers okay yeah, yeah. still in yeah. high school and we here on a bullhorn all right, boys, we got y'all tonight. And, hey, they on both sides, and it's getting dark. They done built a fire. This is one of them all-nighters. You know, me and Phil looked at each other, and, hey, they had a dog. looked like a beagle. He come swimming out there, and me and Phil both had a shotgun on him. You know, he swam out there, and then swam back. You know, and Phil looked at me, and he said, you know what we got to do, right? And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, see, they don't know. This slough we're in is seven miles long that away, and that's away from the house. So we're fixing height to walk seven miles that way, and then walk another seven miles back to the house. So it's about fourteen miles. <laughs> you know, this is at five thirty dark. Okay, we get home at two a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And the Every, next day, <clears throat> next day we were down to the store getting something. Mama wants to buy, you know, gave us some money to go down and get something, milk and bread or whatever. And they was there told me, well, we thought we had you boys last night. <laughs> and we said, what are you talking about? And he said, hey, your car's parked down there in Grimes' uh, pecan orchard. We know y'all was the one down there. I said, hey, look, we've been home all night, so I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> broke down. <laughs> broke down. I said, that's the car. We was down there, you know, a couple of days ago. It broke down. We ain't had time to get out and fix it. Yeah. My, my favorite part about all these all these game stories is Miss K was an accessory to every one of them. No, no. Miss K was the, the driver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, can, I can see her now in that blue uh, uh, Chevrolet. Blue, I think it was Chevrolet, but she had a blue Chevrolet when her and Phil was dating. You know, she'd drop us off, and then we had a, another arrangement. Hey, stop a hundred yards or two hundred yards down the down the road. You know, come back when you come back. You know, she was the wheel lady. I'm amazed she could see over the dash. Oh no, that's what I was <laughs> laughing about because I pictured I pictured her. She just barely could. All you could see was the top of her head <laughs> over the dashboard. <laughs> But she could drive that little old car she had. Yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that Kay dated Phil and Cy. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. That's no, one no. of my favorite hey, parts. Yeah, no, this is one of the funniest <laughs> stories. Their first date, yo. Know. 
<laughs> Beth said, Mom, I'm going out on a date tonight. She said, take a younger brother. <laughs> he said, Mom, I'm going out on a date. She said, I know, take your younger brother. Yeah, you know, so we're at the at the juke joint, all at the malt shop, whatever it was, uh, you know. And somebody come up and said, "Who's that y'all got in the back?" And Phil said, "Oh, that's just Si." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mama knew younger brother tail on older brother. Oh well, hey, that's it. Hey, I was, I was I was the uh, the to keep them from behaving themselves. <laughs> yeah. Okay, said, "Well, I grew up with him. He's been with him." <laughs> You know, he's been with me. He's part of the family. I said, yeah, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, did you say I do at the wedding, too? Oh, no, but <laughs> hey, it wasn't no thing, you know, such thing as best man, but hey, you know. We all know it. I was, the fifth, I was the fifth wheel. But there ain't but two of them. <laughs> Who was third and fourth? <laughs> right, yeah, right. I'm just telling you, I was always there. <laughs> oh, and on that note, we're going to take our next break. How is it possible that somebody could steal your house and you don't even know it? Well, they don't steal your house. They steal the title to your house. And what they'll do is they'll print out a quick claim deed. They'll forge your signature on that. And then they'll take out loans against the equity that you've got in your house. So it's like you get to keep your house until the creditors start coming. That's that's the biggest problem with it. You You won't know until you get a late notice that it's been done. But one way to find out is you can sign up at HomeTitleLock.com and register your address. And you there's potential you could have already been a victim of this. But if you go to HomeTitleLock.com, use the code radio, you'll get 30 free days of protection. And it'll just give you peace of mind knowing that this hasn't happened to you. Because today it is the number one white collar crime. It's the fastest growing white collar crime in the country. So that's code radio at HomeTitleLock.com. Go get you some protection. Check it out. Make sure you're not already a victim. Kay's always been my third sister. That's what's so funny about that. Well, you did name one of her children. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Which one did you name? No, no. Look, and I didn't even remember it. You know, uh, I spent a lot of time in Junction City, and we kept Jason as a baby a lot, okay? That's why it's so hard, is it, I guess. <laughs> that explains yeah. a lot. I, yeah. Well, why didn't he get your personality? Huh? You all rainbows and butterflies. He's no, no. halfway doing Now, that boom. part I don't understand. <laughs> I really don't, because, hey, none of my uh, good-natured, okay, and let's have fun rubbed off on Jason. Yeah. What would you say he is? Oh, good grief. No. We ain't come up with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He used yeah. to call him a fun sucker. Yeah. He That's will. what he used to call him. Yeah. He said he'll just suck the fun right out of anything. Yeah. That's why he duck hunts by himself in the afternoon. Yeah. Because he's, he's his only friend. Well, I will say this. Me and Sire are getting in the rig. As soon as oh. we get done here. That's why we're heading south. We're going down to Venice. I got to have a break. Buddy, my buddy Josh Gault got a little, little fish catching and duck killing. Oh, yeah, he's got, he's got these spots. So what do duck hunters do when they go on vacation? They duck hunt. They go duck hunting somewhere else. Well, we got to go somewhere else so we can actually have a little take, fun. Take a break, boys. <laughs> get a little R&R. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 both of Look, us get and hey, bombarded. And, yeah, and laughing... And having a good time is in. That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not all serious, okay? Uh, Let's have a little uh, bit of fun doing this. Well, you know, their favorite thing is to gripe when somebody misses a duck, you know. <clears throat> and Jace is like, well, y'all should have killed them too. You know, they go, well, yeah, yeah. I said, Jace, you got two men in their 70s and a person – who's never duck cut in their life down on the, that left side of the blind. You got to get off this griping when people miss ducks. Well, not only it's going to happen when you run with a bunch of, uh, Uh-oh. paranoid, schizophrenic, whatever, uh, you know, they all need to have a personal psychiatrist. Okay. Way too serious. <laughs> Way too serious. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's have some fun. Yeah, yeah. Who's out laughing down there? Hey, oh. who's talking that's loud? Right, I, wish y'all hey. was, I wish y'all would have seen me the other night in that Yeti deal. We were we were doing that Yeti film, and we were filming Jace just going back and forth on the lane down there, wide open. Well, it got dark on us. In what? In oh, the, in the in boat? The boats. Yeah, in the boat. So I we we got done. I didn't have no light. I didn't know we was going to be down there in the dark. Jace said, 
Jay said, you need a light? And I said, no, man, I still remember where I'm going. And then you Well, hear, buddy. Yeah, then you hear, wham. I smoked a tree in the dark. <laughs> I'm talking about, I looked up and I said, hold on. I had no idea. I done got confused in there where, where, where it got dark on me. Because when you get out of that little, you can see the chute going through the button wheelers, no problem. When you hit them woods, it went dark. And I couldn't see the P-Row no more to mark the turn in the boat channel. And I just, boom. Jay said, I know you needed that light. Yeah. And oak, tree, <laughs> and oak trees have, have do not have any gills in them. No, they don't move. Well, look, those, yeah. those mud motors, mud motor boats are dangerous. That thing's heavy. Heavy. I'm not used to the one that I have. Oh, I wasn't there. Heavy. I wasn't there in the backwater for Phil. Oh, T-Bone. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Jace. Run T-bone over. Field. Jace, or Jace T-Bone Jace. Field. Yeah. Oh. Ten foot of water. Yeah. yeah. And look, I'm talking about the boat went over the other no, boat. No, there were three Yamaha executives I remember in that. the boat with Phil. Yeah. Yeah. That's why them Yamaha boys are steady trying to figure out how to make a safer mud motor. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I tell you a good one yesterday too. Me and Galvin, you know, Galvin decided when we got done, forgot them wires out there. Yep. So we go out there, putter him back to the blind. I tell Galvin, I'm like, after my experience the day before with it, I said, like, Go ahead and pick that motor up. So he picked it up. And we still coming in hot. I said, well, turn it off or something. And I turn around and look at him. Godwin's holding a key in his hand. <laughs> the daggum motor wouldn't turn off. So, so we just I, I uh, did you, boat I'd blind, I'd boat it, blind, I'd boat I'd blind. Have, Boom. Yeah. I'd I just pitch it to you and say, you cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, but you, you, know, out. you know what's going to happen now. Oh. You know what's going to happen now. Somebody's going to get blamed. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And it'd probably up. be yours truly, and no. I never even run him. No, I can hear Phil now. Them two fat boys done got yeah, down there. That's that's, it. That, oh, every no. time me and Godwin get together, that's how oh, it so always I, I ends up. Say, them two fat boys. No, no, I was actually getting worried about y'all. I said, I think I'm going to get in the four wheelers because something's broke down. <laughs> they've they've done something wrong. No, it actually wasn't broke down. It wouldn't well, turn off. <laughs> well, quite well, the opposite. <laughs> I knew something was up. I said, because, hey, all they had to do was go out there and get a piece of wire that they rolled up and forgot yeah and i said it's been an iron and a half <laughs> i said they've tore up something or ruined or sunk it or whatever well we tried everything we could to get that motor to turn off except choke it because we didn't want to do that to the motor we didn't want to flood it with fuel to kill right. it so I we, wish were, I, we were wiggling beating banging uh, trying to yeah. get and then I wish I'd like, been there nah, my we got to choke it i wish i'd <laughs> been there with my pistol i'm just talking about you sorry piece of <laughs> 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 Got to take the horse out. But the best, the best, the best story about running them mud boats is we were hunting about well seven eight years ago. We had an ice storm come through. There was ice on the water. Oh. Jay, me and Jace take the decoy boat. <laughs> Phil takes the other boat with all the men and all the grit and whatnot. So me and Jace get out there. We have to create an, a hole because it's iced over. So we're turning circles. We get it all cleaned out. Well, we're putting out the decoys. Here comes Phil. With about five men, were you there? Mm-mm. I think Martin, no. what, I was laid there. out that morning. I, I actually might have been. There. No, you weren't there. No, there was we, one we, morning. No, you're, with you're ice. No, you're not allowed. It, here's the funny. <laughs> I know thing. I'm not premises. allowed. Yeah, here's so, the funny. So here's twice. here's the thing, si. So we we I'm looking. I'm seeing y'all come in. Si was there. Uh, Lyle Sinky, Godwin, yeah. uh, Burley was in mm-hmm. there. Yep. Burley and Phil. So a lot of weight. So they're going around the circle. And Godwin. Yeah. yeah, so they're going around in circles, I, and I told Jason, I said, "What is it? What is he doing?" He says, "I don't know. You know, getting old. What? You know, he's going around in circles." Well, they keep going around in circles, and and it, and the boat keeps getting lower and lower and lower. And I said, "They're sinking." He said, "Do what?" I said, "They are sinking." So I turn around, and look, Godwin is screaming. <laughs> They <laughs> sound like like a nature rat, and then I heard I heard some girl, la, 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 la. <laughs> and then I heard Lyle Sinky say, "Oh no, oh no!" He's holding his camera equipment up. Sai's got a shotgun up here like this, like he's wading through a swamp in Vietnam, you know. And Phil's just standing there holding the motor. He's yeah. just, <laughs> just Phil, Phil never no, let go of the motor. No, no. Hey, he the, never let no, go no. of the motor. He's still running, and what he's here's what he said: "Grab that boat." So Godwin. Yeah, you know, here's a boat full of water. Godwin just ducks down and grabs the boat. No, no, that ain't how it happened. I remember exactly what yeah, happened. Hey. Phil yeah. says, 
my motor, my motor, my motor, my motor. Get out the boat. Get and out then, the boat. Then they were getting out of the boat, and he had some brush to brush mm-hmm. the duck blind on the front of the boat. And everybody was trying to get out of there. And he said, hey, 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 be watch, easy. Yeah, watch my brush. <laughs> he watch said, don't be tearing brush. my brush up, you know. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that was so, a good one. So he gets back on that motor. He said, my motor, my motor, save the motor, Burl, save the motor. Where well, Burl and Phil are holding one side of the boat up like this. Well, yep. the other side of the boat is on the bottom. Of the it's water. it's water. three foot of water. It's full of water. Okay, it's full of water. So the motor is halfway in, halfway out. So Phil says, he looked at me. He said, reach down there, grab the other end of that boat, pick it up. And I said, huh? <laughs> I'm still standing, standing in the boat with Jace. He said, "Get out of that boat and get down there and pick that and pick it up and save this motor." I, I'm thinking, and Sai automatically says, "Hey, he, no, Phil says we used to pull them out of twenty foot of water." <laughs> and Sai said, "Hey, them boats have styrofoam in them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this ain't here is solid metal, uh, full no. of water." But what did Jace say? Here's so, the, here's my so favorite here, part. Here's, this so, is the best. So I look at Jace. Phil's hollering. I mean, he's hollering at me and Jace. Y'all get out there and pick this boat. And I look at Jace. I said, you going to get out? He said, nope. <laughs> he said, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end leads to death. That was his exact words when I asked if he's going to get out of the boat. And then he said, somebody's got to got to survive to tell the story. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, within 12 minutes. The boat is pulled over on the bank, bailed out. We're all in it and going to the blind. And guess what? That motor crept right back up. So here's how that happened. So <laughs> Godwin, me and Godwin are standing there. Phil's hollering at me. So he's hollering at me. I'm going to get out and at least, even though it's just ignorant, to try to pick up a boat full of water. He said, get out there and pick it up. Yeah. So me and Godwin, I went down with one arm. Godwin goes down with two arms. And grabs that boat off the bottom. Oh, he's, he's full of water. God. And, and yeah. water just pours oh, yeah. In, yeah. in both of our waders. Yeah. They're so wet. We're, we're, it's 25 degrees. Oh, yeah. There's ice. Yeah. And we tried to pick it up. I said, nope. I said, everybody grab that rope. We all went to the front of the boat. Well, Phil and Bernie are holding on to the side of it, trying to save the motor. So me and Lyle and Guy, we start pulling that, that, that rope. Phil's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What? We're trying to pull it up. There's a mound. I'm pulling the boat. Toward, and that's doable. We're going to drag it to the man. So we're pulling. And do. He said, hey, my motor, my motor, my motor. And then they finally have to let go because we're pulling it from them. Well, they let go of that motor. <laughs> Gone. Gone. Phil said, well, y'all did it. You boys, you did it. You did it. <laughs> so I, I said, keep pulling, keep pulling. We pulled up on the mound. Got a bucket. Bailed it out. It's floating again. I go back there, crank it up. Whoa. Fires right up. Oh, that's fantastic. They get in the blind. Everybody gets in the blind, including Goblin. I drive it back to the boathouse, hide it, come back nope. like I always do. And he's soaking wet I'm now. soaking wet. They're freezing to death. Goblin's sitting there doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Goblin said, I'm out of here. So he got his crap. He gone. So the, that's why I remember the next day, no one wanted to go. So I finally oh, got so to go. So you finally got to go. I was the next day breaking up ice, but I didn't yeah. know what I was doing. Oh, no, no. And hey. I was just watching Stone, and Stone looked at me and goes, are you going to do something or not? And I was like, I don't know what to do. Just tell me what to do. I'm trying to help. Please, please help me. And then please I just sat me. there the whole time. So, so that look. ain't my first rodeo being sunk with Phil Robertson, buddy. So <laughs> no. Well, look, let's, t- oh, let's talk about another Phil sinking story right after this break. Stone, tell us about Omega XL. I know you've been on it for way longer oh, yeah. than any of us well, have. Well, you so. know, it, they, they're a sponsor on Unashamed podcast that Phil and Jason and Al do. And uh, Al brought home the Omega XL, and he said, take this, and all your aches and pains will be gone because there's 35 years of research and development, boys, and guess what? It's working for you. But You ain't going to beat that guy. I will say this. I have been taking it for nine months, and I can tell a difference. I can tell a difference. That uh, I had tendonitis in my elbow, it's gone. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. Well, the reason it's gone is because the fatty acids in the Omega XL actually treat the inflammation. They don't just mask it mm-hmm. like typical topical stuff does. So um, they have done their research. Uh, we've got viewers that have emailed in and told us how good it's done for them. So just uh, you can take our word for it. 
when prescriptions fail, give Omega XL a try. And we're here to help get you started. If you'll order Omega XL now, you'll get a second bottle for free, just like we did. You see the two bottles on the deal. That's OmegaXL.com slash duck. OmegaXL.com slash duck or call 1-800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. And J.D., guess what? You just lost your free bottle. Because I'm fixing to try it, okay? Just to show the people that old dogs can do learn new tricks. Oh, the best part that was just Godwin wouldn't stand up. Wouldn't stand up. Remember, he was just floundering in it for no, a no, minute no. before yeah. he realized, oh, no. yeah. I can stand up. Yeah. Well, you know, he gets paranoid oh, when hey, he, he gets around ice. Cold hey. water. I, look, I'll yeah. tell you a story. No, Let me no, tell you a story. He's scared of ice. Let John me tell is you. scared of ice. He, he, Martin's got a good story. Let me tell him. you a story about Goblin and cold water. So what was that? It was probably five years ago. Me and Goblin made a little pact. We're we going to get a little better shape. So we joined the wellness center up there. We worked out every day. Every day. Mainly because my buddy Clark is a, a dead gum dictator and made me. He dragged me out of bed every morning. But that's probably the reason I'm still alive and my back doesn't hurt anymore. But yeah. anyway. So we made a pact, and we up there working out, working out. You know, well, we would come to work right after that. So you just go in there and take a shower. Well, one morning, we were in there taking a shower, and the hot water heater quit. And that thing blew cold water on us from out of nowhere. And I kid you not, in the stall next to me, I just hear, <laughs> <laughs> And he just, he just, <laughs> So being six four and knowing that it's Galvin, I peeked over the top and I said, "Are you okay, buddy?" He said, "I'm locked up. I'm like cold water's got me locked up." And he's just sitting there. You just, you just and he's just got his fist clenched and that cold water's hitting him in the belly and he can't move. So I reached over uh, the deal and turned the water off for him. Uh, I, I, I'm over there just. It literally locked him up. Couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about could not uh, move, son. He just and he just in there. <laughs> that's all he kept doing. He just he and you know, Goblin when he gets like that, he just he looks almost like he's got an alcohol problem because he just turned just solid red. Everything on him was red. The fists were clenched, and he's just just groaning. He, he cramped up, in other words. Yeah, he couldn't move. It locked him up, and ever since then, we went hunting another morning. And he got wet, and he said, I'm going to lock up and die. I'm going to lock up and die. Something about that cold water, when it hits his belly, son, it's over. I guess that's why the boy likes hot tubs so much. Well, no, no, no. I he, don't know. He, yeah, but he's got a thing about ice, because we was in Kansas. The one time I went up there to hunt with Barrett and him. Yeah, whenever we used to go up there and freeze our yeah. tails off for three yeah. or four days. So, look, Barrett went out there with a chainsaw and cut a big opening and getting it ready for duck hunting, you know. And, and we all got in the blind. And guy wouldn't come walk up, and you got to walk on ice to get to the blind. It's froze. How know? far was the walk? Oh, probably uh, about maybe 10 yards, maybe. Oh, that's a little embellishment. It's about well, 40. It's about well, 40 from the end of the levee well, anyway, where he would drop us off well, to right, the ditch. The, the part that the was ditch. iced over. Yeah. This, oh, the part that's iced over was probably yeah, but 20 we drove. Max. Yeah, well, we drove right up to the back of the blind. Yeah, I know. Wood. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so it ain't that far, you know. But anyway, we'd all just walked over there, you know, and you, you, of course you're on ice, it's slippery, so watch you walk how you walk. You know, God, God, we, Wouldn't we, do it. Tell me, come on. He said, uh, 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 he, he'd, he'd slide his foot out on him, uh, 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 uh. and Phil said, hey, get in the blind, it's getting daylight. <laughs> you know, God, when he, he, he couldn't do it. He, he, he has a phobia about ice. Oh, he does. He walked he all like the way around that hole to come in from the other side <laughs> so he wouldn't there. have to walk across the aisle. A mile and a half. <laughs> well, it gets further every time it's the story quarter, gets told. a quarter, a quarter, uh, uh, and then a half uh, of uh, another quarter. Well, he, had, yeah. he got a phobia about ice. Oh, the boy. That's All these people have invited us ice fishing over the years, and he's like, nope. Here's one for you. Okay, Ma Moss Lake days. No, me and si went ice fishing. No, no, hey, Moss Lake days, okay. Uh -huh. The buck brush, they cut a, uh, not a straight deal like he done on his property. They didn't want the, the game wards to know how to get in there. So, hey, they did it like zigzag. Okay, so look, that was back in his drinking days. 
<laughs> well, so, he may hey. have just been drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. He thought he was going yeah. straight. No, 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 no. So we got two boats. We got a big boat, and then we got a 12-foot boat, okay? <clears throat> so they get in a big boat, Phil and Al Bowling, a couple of guys, and then he tells the other four, okay, and they're all about, oh, between 250 and 300 pounds apiece. I resemble that. Okay, so Phil says, oh, oh, you other four get in the boat with Si. In the 12-footer? Yeah. Oh. So, hey, I'm Ooh. watching these uh, elephants step in the boats, Elef and every time elephant. it does, it goes down It <laughs> goes down four inches. Well, the next elephant stepped in four inches. So I'm looking, and I've got this much freeboard. And I said, hey, uh, two of y'all better uh, get on here on the, on the uh, pier, and I'll be back and get you. And Phil hollers out. He's drunk as a skunk. No. Hey, get in that boat. It's getting daylight. <laughs> I said, Phil, I don't want to get wet. He said, oh, you won't get wet. That's how you take it easy. You know, and the boat, he's gone. You know, so, hey, they all pile in the boat. So, look, I've got a, I don't know what, I think a 9.8, you know, motor. I am might near breaking it going out to buck brush zigzag deal. You know, and I'm... <laughs> Well, I get on the open water at the lake. Okay, the tree blind is out there in the middle of this thing. It's about this deep. <clears throat> so I'm going, and it's starting to pick up speed. Uh-oh. And I said, I said, if I do it anymore, I'm going to break it because I heard it kind of just crack. And it's like it was cracking. I did, then I, hey, I look, and there is a stampede of elephants coming my way. <laughs> You done torpedo that cause, thing. Cause hey, <laughs> cause in my no no, cause in my mind I heard, duff duff duff, <laughs> and hey, here they come, they running back uh, me, uh, and I'm like this, just the boat sinking. <laughs> I ain't never even moved. I just, <sighs> and then about that time you found a bottom. It bottom, you know, and they're just floundering up. These elephants are all floundering, all four of them. <laughs> Yo, we're right in front of the blind. And Phil's leaning over the gun port saying, Stand up! Stand up! Yo, <laughs> look, it, it is like 18 degrees with 35 mile northwest wind. And y'all about to tear that tail off. Oh, no, look. Yo, Phil says, Hey, hurry up. Get all your grit. Get up the ladder. You know, and I said, well, what are you going to do with the boat? He said, just push it back behind the blind. <laughs> you know, so, hey, they get their grit. They all go up the ladder and get up there. I push the stupid boat behind the blind and get up the ladder. And I'm immediately inside the blind, okay, looking for something, okay, that will burn. <laughs> so for the next six hours, okay, <laughs> Everything is damp. It will not catch fire, but it's smoking. So I'm in over there just, just hovering over smoke. I'm just keep piling bar, uh, wet shotgun boxes, anything, tearing bark off the tree, putting it on. <laughs> Six hours worth of this, okay? Uh, but I finally got dry. <laughs> you smoke. Yeah. You smoked yourself till you oh, was no, 35 you internal, didn't you? You could have <laughs> ate me. You could have ate me because, hey, I've been smoked for six hours, buddy. But I did get dry. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. So, no. Oh, there's... No, but the best part, uh, but going back to that, that when Phil sunk the boat from turning the tight circles, you know, the best part about that was he blamed it on Godwin and Burley. He said... <laughs> Hey, we all got in the blind. We got ready to hunt. He looked around. He said, yep, that's what happens when you boys can't lay off them honey buns. Too many honey buns. Uh, <laughs> not, it's not the fact that he was turning <laughs> yeah, tight circles yeah, yeah. with about two inches of freeboard. Yeah. It ain't ever the captain's you know, fault. It's never the captain's fault. But what do you say, Si, you got tire tracks all up and down your back from that blame shifting. Oh, no. Hey, I've had that for 72 years. <laughs> I ain't number one. I ain't never killed nothing, and everything that goes wrong, I'm the one that done it. Amen. That's it. And if it ain't you, it's me and Godwin. Hey, that's, that's it. Show.
Yeah. I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard them two fat boys. Boy, yeah. <laughs> them two fat them boys. Two heavy boys. Yeah. Yeah. Two heavy yeah. boys. They, they tore that motor up. But he says it with love, you know. <laughs> yeah. He says it with love. You don't ever question it. It is. I laugh every time he says it. Oh, it it's say, <laughs> He don't mean nothing about it. Oh, I know. I was crawling in front of him yesterday. He said, Martin, you ain't quite as big as you used to be. I said, no, Phil, I've lost about 40. He said, that's a good thing. I don't think you'd have made it through that door. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's on that little blind on a north lane. I was like, "Well, oh. you can't, you can't be sensitive and thin-skinned." No, no, no. no I well, you know, I, if you I've are, been, you're fixing to go home crying. Oh yeah, sobbing, okay. oh, sobbing. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been catching a lot of it here lately oh. from old Jace. As people tell me, "Oh, I heard Jace on the podcast. He's just ripping you because, <laughs> yo, you, you know, tried to talk Phil into going where we didn't want to go. You know, and you got some kind of coup going against him. You know." Oh, the best thing I, I like, like about Phil is is the nicknames he gives everybody. Oh, I've had a few of them. Yeah. Horsehead, Buster yep. Crab. He knew my name for 25 <laughs> years, and then somewhere a lot, about five years ago, he just started calling me random stuff. Tommy B, Jimmy C, oh, every right. time it's something new. <laughs> oh, well, hey, look, J.D., that's better than be called No Legs. <laughs> no Legs? Yeah. Now, it's a good story about this. Phil, <laughs> Phil, look, cameraman, okay? Phil, we go in the woods – Waiting, okay, to hunt some woodies. Okay, Phil's got the uh, hip boots on. Okay, so he goes, you know, and the next day we're gonna go back somewhere else to another spot that was gonna wait. I think, no, it was the same one. We told him up and we went back to the same place. So the, the uh, cameraman said, uh, Hey, I, my waiter's sprung a leak. I, I need, I need, and Phil said, Well, hey, you know, I got a new pair. Hey, put them old ones on, you know, and you can wear mine. Yeah. So we're all waiting in a line going out to where we're going to kill these woodies. And we hear, oh, golly, boy, that water's cold. And Phil looked back and said, what are you talking about? And the guy said, hey, there's, there's water pouring in these waders. They must leak. And Phil said, they don't leak. I wore them yesterday, stupid. <laughs> you know, about that time when we come up wading out, it's daylight. Phil looked back and the guy said, God, this water's cold. And Phil said, oh, I, I see your problems there, no legs. <laughs> he, said, oh, no legs. he said, I didn't even think about it. He said, son, you ain't got no legs. He said, them hip boots are, are, are deep enough to, to not get wet. He said, but, hey, you ain't got no legs, so, yeah, you're going to get wet. Oh, no legs. Oh, no <laughs> legs. That's the story of no legs. All right, let's take our last break, and we'll be right back. So, post-Christmas... After all of our spending on gifts and everything, I got my Scoremaster report the other day. And guess what? You doing okay? Your boy's credit score actually went up. Can you believe that? Look, that's how easy it is. The average person has 97 points they can add quickly to their credit score. But most of them have no idea how to get them. But the Scoremaster credit card scientist. Imagine if that was used, uh, a credit card scientist. They've unlocked the key to gaining points on your credit score. Do you know what that means for you? What does it mean? That means on a vehicle loan, you can save nine, ten, eleven thousand dollars over the life of the loan. And more importantly, on a home loan, because everybody's leaving the cities these days, you could save a hundred thousand dollars you're putting back in your pocket just by increasing your credit score the ninety seven points. The average person increases at sixty one points in the first twenty days or less. So I mean, we could all use a little extra money, especially post Christmas and pre-taxes so it helps for everybody score master puts you in control of your finances enroll in minutes and see how many points you can add to your credit score at scoremaster.com slash duck that's scoremaster.com slash duck it's arguably our favorite time of the week now we get to read the emails that you guys sent to hello at duckcallroom.com for our psychic cool people that take the time to respond to us we appreciate it and y'all y'all be sure to keep reaching out to uh our email address it is hello h-e-l-l-o at duckcallroom.com johnny d who's coming in hot this week is it, are we going with psychic cool people i w- i think we have to I think right we're, i think I mean, we're going that way JD. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah fine yeah, we'll yeah. go that way um we do get a lot of emails <laughs> just to preface this for this episode we get it. We like Jace. Y'all like Jace. You don't have to say Team Jace in an email every time yeah. we make fun of him. There's this other one called Unashamed. Go listen to that if you want to listen oh, to it. Oh, whoa. Uh, watch no, out. I'm oh, just kidding. But no, we're Team J, Team Cy, Team Martin over here. We're not Team Jace, but 
just to get out ahead of that. There's, I got like five emails last week like, uh, hey, y'all are picking on Jace. I'm like, because there's a reason. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. Um, but here was my favorite one because uh, we talked about my uh, vasectomy, you know, for in extent a couple weeks ago. And this guy said, that was the funniest episode yet. I had the snip snip as well. And right in the middle of it, the doctor says, uh-oh. Oh. My boy Andrew Parks got the worst two. I always thought like a haircut or a tattoo would be the worst time you could hear uh-oh. No, vasectomy. Vasectomy. Yeah. Yeah. I've changed my mind. What did he nick? Yeah. I, I saw he was bleeding. Uh-oh. He went home. Uh-oh. He said, good times. Keep up the humor. So he's got a good attitude. Oh, well, that's good. My man Andrew has a good attitude. But if you're going to tell me the vasectomy man said uh-oh. And not tell me what happened. But he, he, he was bleeding. I didn't. I mean, I don't want too much information. Yeah, there was no, some no. more information, but ah, when I saw yeah, the word, uh-oh, yeah, I said, you, you stopped? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to go there. All right. Um, and then. Uh, Sorry about your luck, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hope you're doing okay. Yeah. 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 Uh-oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then uh, this guy wrote in and wants Martin to give dating advice because uh, it's really unthinkable how someone looking like Martin got that girl. <laughs> Love the show. <laughs> what are you trying to say? He outkicked his coverage? Uh, but this, is my, oh. this is my favorite line. But really think this magic trick Martin did would be a public service to everyone. Well, look, I don't know why I'm the one that continually gets picked on for that because there ain't a one of us here <laughs> that ain't outkicked our coverage. This that, is and true. that goes for you, 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 yep. all of us. Mr. Gowdwin, I mean – Golly, hey. Willie, for crying out loud, are you kidding? Hey, love is blind. <laughs> and it's a good thing. That's the answer, boys. <laughs> the answer is, too, I'm, going to, I'm just going to tell you, you have to believe in the product that you sell. And you're selling yourself when you're dating. And if you don't believe in yourself, they can see right through that. Mm-hmm. So project yourself with confidence and, and let them know, we're still going to duck hunt. Then you'll be all right. Everything else will work out. Phil says, our women pick ducks. That's a lie. I'm going to put that disclaimer in here right now. My woman ain't ever picked no duck, and I ain't asked her to either. That's right, and she ain't going to pick Yeah, <laughs> And neither am I. I got one better than that. Mine ain't going to cook, period. <laughs> oh, she, I know no, that. She, I know that. Now, Nana, Nana, get on that dessert bag now. Oh, she'll yeah. she'll, she'll fire up dessert. in dessert. I, to be fair, right. if I was married to Stone, I wouldn't cook either, because you were just telling us about Cochon de la Cochon pig. Cochon de la. Yeah. The man's yeah. cooking a whole pig right now. Right well, now. look, this hammer's done cook. A, two whole beef tenderloins yesterday and fed them to us and the day before he cooked a bunch of ribeyes so yeah i wouldn't cook either the last time i talked to willie he i said uh, we were trying to have a meeting he only wanted to talk about something stone cooked yeah and i was like well, why don't you tell stone me? is one of the few others. skinny cooks you can trust but that's only because you see his old pictures yeah <laughs> <laughs> he went yeah, through he, a he, he used to not be uh, you, need to, like you oh, need to know Stone circa 2012, and then you'd be like, oh, yeah, I'd eat what he cooked. Oh, no yeah. problem. Oh. <laughs> oh, I went through what they call a midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. Uh, no, what happened was I chased down that Mallard Drake back in, two, uh, let's see, what was that, five years ago? 15. 2016. And when I got to him, I went, hey. Yeah. Hey. Mallard Drake. Hey, Mallard Drakes are deadly. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, my little Drake's I was dead. wheezing like an asthmatic. I said, I got back home. I told the wife, I said, nope. I said, this ain't going to work. I got to do something. I got to get myself into shape. So I went and buddy of mine owns a boxing gym down the road. I said, hey, I need you to whoop me into shape. He laughed. He looked at me and laughed. <laughs> he says, you can't do it. I said, well, we going to do it or, or I'm going to uh, die. Yeah, then what he run up on Mr. Lee. Yeah. And so okay. he put me on this old man. He said, yeah. you see that old man standing over there? I said, yeah. He said, go tell him, I said, to to work you out and to train you just like one of these professional boxers over here. So I went and told I tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around and said, what? (laughs) (laughs) He said, uh, he said, what do you want? I said, uh, Sparky said for you to, you to train me today. He laughed. (laughs) He tried to kill him. You know, he laughed. I'm serious. Mr. Lee tried to kill him. Two hours later, I hobbled to the truck. I woke up the next morning. I tried to get out of bed. I just <laughs> hit the ground. <laughs> I'm dragging. I'm dragging myself. I'm dragging myself to the bathroom. And my wife gets up. She's like, what are you doing? I said, I can't walk. I can't walk. <laughs> it took me three days to where I could walk. And then three more days to for the soreness to go away. So I showed up there about seven days later. 
And Mr. Lee was standing at the door. He said, I'll be that good. <laughs> I just lost $20. <laughs> <laughs> $20. He didn't I think he was yeah. coming back. You'd never be back. <laughs> at that point, I weighed about 230. <laughs> well, that was five years ago. So now I'm about 185. Best shape of my life. So yeah. I, I tricked my brain into thinking, this is fun. It ain't fun. <laughs> I was about to say. I, but I tricked myself into thinking this was fun. But it works. It, it was self-induced torture is what I, it was. I ain't that smart. No. I ain't that smart. <laughs> we didn't argue Ain't that. no tricking this boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trick. You can't God, slick You him. ain't tricking uh, me. But no, my, cook, my cooking skills never left me. Hey, yeah. That's it. So, hey, that's important. I agree with that. What else we got, Sean? That is important. Um, a couple of people, the only negative thing they have to say about the podcast is that sometimes we shout and scream and don't talk in the microphones. And by we, they mean Cy. <laughs> <laughs> and Cy si said, moving on. Moving on from that one. <laughs> and then the last one we got uh, from today, somebody that wants to know what uh, version of the Bible you read, Cy. Si. Whenever what you read, that'd be the King James version or the new NIV. NIV or King James. That's it. Well, That's the two I read. Well, on that note, you got something for us today? No, I told you to get it, uh. dummy. <laughs> Don't put me on a spot like that. Yeah. <laughs> he did. Right. I got it. Why you, did I? When I first come in here, I you said, said, "Hey, give us a scripture because you did so well." On your He's first hung up well, on my first Well, Johnny scripture. D, take us home then. Take That's us it. home. All right. He told me to stay in the same line. So, second, bleh. you should be able to talk better if you're going to be on a podcast. <laughs> there we go. Get Restart. it out of there. Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Exclamation point. Hey, that's on the same thing that he gave us the first time, boys, about Revelations 21, 4 and 5. About the one that sits on the throne is going to make everything new. And hey, he can do it for you today. Happy 2021. Appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll see y'all next time on the Duck Call Room. We're out.